Faces. Hi everybody and welcome to Blank Faces UK for this very special breaking news episode. As you know, very early viewers would know that I covered the case of Olivia Pratt Corbell when she was murdered ruthlessly by Thomas Cashman. The case went on for weeks and it was quite a shocking case and it was quite a struggle to get through. But today we have breaking news. As you know, he was jailed for life for the murder of Olivia Pratt Corbell, Thomas Cashman was. But today, his sentence has been solidified as we find out that Thomas Cashman's appeal has been rejected. So we head over to the Liverpool Echo where our favourite Crown Court reporter Adam Everett reported an article this morning. He says Thomas Cashman loses bid to have conviction for Olivia Pratt Corbell murder overturned. The nine-year-old schoolgirl was shot dead inside her own home on Kings Heath Avenue in Dovecot. Thomas Cashman has failed to have his conviction for the murder of Olivia Pratt Corbell overturned and a 36-year-old of Grenadier Drive in West Derby was jailed for life with a minimum term of 42 years after being found unanimously guilty of murdering the nine-year-old schoolgirl by a jury last year. Little Olivia Pratt Corbell was shot dead in her home on King's Eve Avenue in Dovecot in one of the most horrific crimes in Merseyside's history. Her mum, Cheryl Corbell, was also struck by a bullet as Thomas Cashman pursued his intended target, Joseph Nee, into the house. Thomas Cashman appeared before the Court of Appeals in London today in a bid to overturn his conviction. But this was ruthlessly thrown out by the presiding judges Lord Justice Holroyd, Sir Stephen Irwin and Mr Justice Hilliard. Cashman's counsel, John Cooper King's counsel, told the court that it should order an investigation into allegations that members of the jury were provided with panic alarms by the police during their deliberations. Lord Justice Holly Road stated that the panel's full reasons for its decision would be given at a later date. At a trial at Manchester Crown Square Crown Court, previously heard that Cashman lay in wait for Joseph Nee while he was armed with two loaded guns as he watched the Liverpool Football Club versus Manchester United Football Club match on the television at his friend's Timmy Naylor's house on Finch Lane. When he left the address with another man, the gunman approached them from behind and opened fire with a self-loading Glock-style pistol. A chilling piece of CCTV footage showed the second male, Paul Abraham, running for his life as two loud bangs rang out. Convicted burglar and drug dealer Joseph Nee was shot in the midriff at this point and he stumbled to the floor as a result of his injuries. David McLaughlin, King's Counsel prosecuting, told jurors that Thomas Cashman had murder on his mind and he stood over the helpless man and attempted to discharge the firearm again as he begged, please don't, don't lad. But the gun malfunctioned and Nee was able to escape. Thomas Cashman, however, continued his ruthless pursuit as he fled towards the Corbell family home. Olivia's mother, alarmed by the gunfire outside, had stepped out of her house in order to investigate, but quickly rushed back indoors upon seeing Joseph Nee running towards her and away from the assassin, who was dressed all in black and had his face covered. She then tussled with the gunman's intended target in an attempt to keep the front door shut and to keep him out of the property. But she was unable to fully close it as it had been left on the latch to allow neighbours to let themselves in for a cup of tea. The assailant fired another shot with a second backup weapon, a 0.3 calibre revolver. At this point, this was a shot which claimed Olivia's life bullet passing through the door and travelling through her mum's hand before striking her in the chest. The schoolgirl had been upstairs in bed. She was heard to say, Mummy, I'm scared. 
and she ran to the bottom of the stairs to her mum, having been startled by the commotion. With Joseph Nee now inside and Thomas Cashman, then forced his arm around the door and fired one final shot, which became lodged within the door frame. Olivia's mum, brother and neighbour all attempted to try and save Olivia's life. Olivia was scooped up by the first police officer to arrive at the scene and rushed to Older Hay Children's Hospital after being critically injured, but was pronounced dead shortly after, before 11.30pm. There were emotional scenes in court as Cheryl Corbell recounted the tragedy in a video interview with police, which was played to the jury. She told detectives, I heard the baby screaming. That's when I turned round and I spotted her sat at the bottom of the stairs. I couldn't keep her awake. Joseph Nee was bundled into a car by his associates and taken to Wishton Hospital and later being transferred to Aintree Hospital after suffering gunshot wounds to the chest and lower abdomen. Thomas Cashman, meanwhile, escaped the scene of the shooting by leaping through back gardens before making his way to the home of a woman with whom he had previously had an affair. She was woken by Thomas Cashman standing at a bedside before she phoned her boyfriend, Paul Russell, who then arrived at the house. We know this witness cannot be named for legal reasons, but she reported she heard Thomas Cashman make an apparent confession to her partner at the doorstep, telling him, I've done Joey. He was then given a change of clothing before being driven back to his Citroen Bilingo van, which he had earlier parked at Aspis Road by Russell. A pair of Under Armour tracksuit bottoms, which was handed at this time, were later found at his sister's home on Mab Lane, with his DNA and traces of gunpowder residue on them. Giving evidence from the witness box, the woman told the trial, I'm sorry, I can't forgive anyone who has hurt any child. If he was any sort of a man, he'd just fucking own it. I can't believe he's making his family go through what they're going through. It's a child. It's a child. She can never go home ever again, and it breaks my heart. The attacker was also identified to have worn a distinctive Monterrain tracksuit, which matched a pair owned by Thomas Cashman. He had been observed on CCTV making a number of trips past Finch Lane on the day in question, in an alleged attempt to carry out the shooting at around 4pm, that afternoon having spotted Nee's van outside. But these plans were ruined after the 35-year-old left to visit Screwfix. Thomas Cashman, however, claimed in his evidence that he had no involvement in the shooting and was counting £10,000 in cash and smoking a spliff at his friend Craig Bryan's house on Snowbury Road at the time. He had admitted being a high-level drug dealer who made up to £5,000 per week selling cannabis, and his various trips around the area throughout the day were supposedly concerned with his involvement in the supply of a Class B substance. Meanwhile, Thomas Cashman accused a woman with whom he had an affair with of attempting to frame him for the murder as she was a woman scorned. He suggested that Paul Russell owed him £25,000 debt and questioned whether she had the motivation by possibility of reward money. And he told the jury, it shows you the length a woman who's got something in for someone would go to. This is how low they would go to. Thomas Cashman also stated he had no problems with the Knee family and counted them as friends. The father of two said on the stand, I'm not a killer, I'm a dad. But he was ultimately found guilty of murder, attempting to murder Nee, and wounding with the intent to inflict grievous bodily harm against Cheryl Corbell, and two counts of possession of a firearm with the intent to endanger life by the jury. The Court of Appeal also rejected an application by Thomas Cashman to challenge his sentence in November 2023. I can tell you one thing, I am so happy the courts have decided not to let him appeal again for his sentence. It's finally over, it's done. He will now be in prison for the rest of his life for the crimes that he committed. 
for taking away Olivia Corbell Pratt from this world. He did that. He alone. He was the one responsible. This has been a Blank Faces UK special report. Thank you very much for watching.